What's up, Lorehounds? It's Cooper here inside PAX South. I'm here with Ted Morris, the executive producer for Grey Group at Petroglyph Games. So you guys actually back in your, you know, RTS pedigree. And congratulations, you launched today on Thank this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We're really excited. We're getting some really great initial reviews, and we're the top seller on Steam at the moment. So we're, we're thrilled right now. And unfortunately for us, this is actually our first take with you guys. We haven't se we've seen you around, but never managed to get an interview. How is Grey Goo coming together as far as the lore of the universe? Why, why are we in this struggle? Well, uh, I can give you a little backstory about where the game came from and, um, and what the story is behind it. So, uh, first off, the game is an RTS game, obviously, and it has three very unique factions. We have the human faction, the beta faction, and the goo faction. And the, the human faction is a faction that is a very turtle-like faction. If you like to base build, if you like to build big walls and lots of turrets, that's the faction for you. If you want to uh, if you want to have more of a flexible, um, you know, expand across the map, um, build mini bases everywhere, then the beta faction is a great faction. It's a good starter faction too, uh, for people that haven't played RTSs before. And then we have the goo, and the goo is unique to our game. We have seen nothing like it out there, where you actually have a mobile base, you grow, you have to, you have to consume to expand and grow and win the game. So um, it's almost like having multiple. Uh, movable bases that you uh, that you uh, you have to manage all at the same time, and and while it is a really easy race to understand and uh, to play, it's really difficult to master. So you know we've got uh, we got a lot of really fun gameplay there, all wrapped up in that. Now the backstory behind the Grey Goo is uh, you've got you've got um, all three factions on the same planet for different reasons. The Beta are struggling to survive. They have uh, uh, retreated after being chased from their home planet um, and they're trying to find a new home. Uh, the humans are out, are searchers, they're exploring and they have released a, a tool called the uh, this nanotechnology, which we call the Great Goo in the game, uh, to help explore the galaxy. And they didn't realize, but the Great Goo becomes sentient and they have to go after it, and they have to chase it down, and they have to eliminate it as a threat. Uh, and it turns out that all three factions are on the same planet, they are uh, fighting with one another because they don't trust one another, um, and, uh, and you know the humans and the betas are, are, are trying to work together against this unknown enemy, this goo, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, we've, we've got a great storyline there, and I think it's going to be really interesting for people to play through the campaign. So it, it sounds obviously, and I, I don't think this point can be stressed enough, that the three factions are completely different. So you're, you're talking about different build ideas, different counters, and all across that. Yeah. Um, how does that impact, like, in the campaign? when are, are, are you fighting multiple fronts against the different enemies at the same time? Yeah, at times you are, right? Uh, you know, obviously we start you off uh, with a beta faction uh, for the first five missions and you play through that and you kind of get a feel for the RTS gameplay for that faction. Uh, and then you move on to the humans and then the goo. And you, it definitely does get progressively more strategically uh, involved. Uh, you know, the Goo is a, a really, really unique faction to play. I mean, I, I, it's hard to even explain, but but it is a very, very fun faction. And um, uh, yeah, it just it's it's really, really good stuff. So, so uh, you mentioned that there's five missions for the beta. Is it five for everybody? So it's 15 mission campaign. Yeah, it's five missions for the beta. Then we move on to the human storyline, uh, and then we move on to the Goo storyline. So, um, and you learn something more about the uh, each faction, and you you really empathize with each group. You know, it turns out that the enemy that you thought was really uh, was was the biggest threat is not your enemy, right? Uh, one of the great things about this game is that we've got uh, Axis uh, has uh, done all the animations for us for the uh, the cutscenes. And they are really beautiful. It's uh, great, great stories being told there, um, and it makes you want to complete each mission to find out what's happened, what's going to happen next. You know, nice little carrot on there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, a lot of the initial concepts for both the movies and the game content was done by What a Workshop, and so we're really happy to have worked with them to uh, to you know build all the pieces for this game, and it really shows because. Uh, you know, this is definitely the most beautiful game that we've ever done, and uh, we've really tried to um, uh, demonstrate the vision 
of what Graybox wanted in this game with a very visually rich environment and uh, that went along with a very you know rich storyline. Yeah, you guys got some pedigree behind uh, the, the game. Not only, of course, Petroglyph itself, who started, you know, a lot of the designers and people working on the game started back in the Westwood days with Command and Conquer and Red Alert and all that good stuff. And, and that kind of will take us to the gameplay. You know, it's been, God, 20 years since those games. So, yeah. you know, what have you learned in the RTS genre of being kind of the people who created it or certainly put it huge on the map? that you're bringing back into and introducing through Grey Goo? Well, uh, there were a lot of experiments over the years. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, there were 20 or 30 RTSs coming out every year. And uh, we we learned a lot. And I think the, the game industry learned a lot about what people wanted out of an RTS. And, there were, and some of those experiments were very successful. Um, you know, they focused heavily on the uh, the base building, or only on the combat, and there was hardly any base building at all, or you know, or maybe it was mostly focused on economy. What we've done is we have tried to bring all three of those core elements of RTS gameplay back in together at equal volumes, so that so that people get that good mix of, of decision making, and um, and and it and and I don't know, it speaks to the core of what made those RTS games great. So um, that's what we focused on with this game. And, um, you know, uh, I think that people are going to really appreciate the throwback, you know, the feel that, that we have here where if you like Command and Conquer, you know, if you liked Red Alert, you're going to have that feel in this game, you know. You're going to have those equal, those equal uh, uh, components in a good balance instead of just all of one and nothing of the others. So it's, it's all the core elements of the RTS brought up to speed to today's not only technology but also the game design philosophies and stuff like that. Yeah, that's absolutely correct, you know, and um, uh, I can't uh, I can't credit uh, the gray box guys enough for uh, helping us to develop this game and we worked really well in concert with them to come up with that game design and to come up with the, the core vision uh, of what this game needed to be in order to speak to the audiences that loved RTSs before. I mean, they were, they, uh, they did a lot of searching to find the right company to build this game, this vision for them. And uh, they wanted to, they really wanted to, uh, something that, that, uh, that made people remember what made these RTS games uh, so popular in the first place. And, and to be honest, one of those things that keeps RTSs so ingrained in, I, I think, our gaming society a lot of the times ends up being the balance of multiplayer. So when you get a, an RTS game that sticks, it's usually due to the multiplayer. Yeah. How are you guys bringing in, aside from the completely separated factions, how are you guys bringing that in to a multiplayer round? Well, we spend a lot of time on balance, and uh, all of our balance happens in multiplayer. We've had, um, we've, we've probably had a, a, a focus group come in probably once a month, and we're talking high school students, we're talking uh, RTS game players from around the uh, Las Vegas Valley and outside as well. We've had some visitors come from outside uh, to come and play the game and give us their thoughts. Um, we've done mock reviews, we've done um, alphas, um, and a ton of game testing on the weekends and in the evenings as well. Uh, so we feel like we've got a really good core product. Plus, we finished this game. We, we finished the core game months ago, and we have been balancing it and playing it and polishing it for the last, I'd say, half a year at this point. So, you know, it, and, and that's what you really need. You know, you, you said it correctly. If the uh, multiplayer doesn't have long legs, the game's going to slowly die over time. We, we feel like this is going to be a very good competitive gameplay. Uh, our game out there for people. Um, we've got leaderboards, um, and we are going to continue to develop features for this product. So we've got a new replay system that's coming uh, online uh, shortly, and we've got a map editor that we're releasing with the core product, and that comes out today as well with the with the with the launch of the main game. So we are expecting and hoping that people will build their own maps and trade them and on Steam as well. So, um, and you know the uh, the campaign itself. Uh, we structured it in a way uh, that would allow and enable people to play competitively once they finish the campaign. 
because we want people to feel like they're trained and ready to play multiplayer once they finish the campaign. So, so it's kind of designed as a tutorial to get you, you know, into the multiplayer mindset. Exactly, and you know the balance. The balance numbers for the campaign are basically the same as the one for multiplayer. So when you play one, you don't feel like you're completely lost when you go to the other. All right, Lore Hounds, Grey Goo is live now on Steam. It is launch day, so go get in, get on the bottom of the leaderboard, and work your way up. Thanks so much, Dad. <laughs>